Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh In this video, we'll be present about segmental reporting and interim report Our presenter for this video is Muhammad Syamil Zakwan bin Muhammad Badrul Hisham Nur Hayati binti Saleh Nur Nadia binti Zubay and Nur Shazatul Shima binti Muhammad Khalid Hi, I am Shima and I would like to present the company background. Wonderland Enterprise is a Malaysian-based company that is part of the Wonderland Group, the world's leading food and beverage company. The company was founded in 1912 in Switzerland and began its operation in Malaysia in 1930. Wonderland Enterprise produced and markets a wide range of food and beverage products including instant coffee, confectionery, culinary products, milk, yogurt and ice cream. The company has a strong presence in Malaysia with over 5,500 employees and night factories across the country. Wonderland Enterprise is committed to sustainability and has set a global goal to achieve zero net greenhouse gas emissions by 2050. The company also aims to reduce its use of single-use plastics and increase its use of renewable energy sources. In addition to its operation in Malaysia, Wonderland Enterprise also exports its products to over 50 countries. The company is listed on the Busan Malaysia and has a market capitalization of approximately RM 127 million as of April 2020. Management Approach Factor to consider having a segment reporting Number 1. Nature of Business, Product and Services Wonderland Berhad Nature Business is an investment holding company. This company also has a subsidiary company that are market, sale, and manufacture food and beverage. The company invests in food and beverage industry. Number two, nature of production process. Wonderland Group has provided Malaysia with superior brand and product while keeping halal perfection and integrity. This company started to expand opportunities and product offerings. It started with the culinary product division. Number three, type of class of customer. The company has a diverse range of stakeholders, including farmers, suppliers, local household, employees, and small business owner, among others who have vital to the company's long-term success. Number four, the method to distribute the product and services. Wonderland Group invests across the country to achieve its head in Selangor and six manufacturing facilities. This company, having established an extensive network with strategically situated sale office throughout Borneo, the company have ability to organize and dedicated company in order to reach their distributor and customer. In Malaysia, the product have been exported to the other country worldwide. Type of segment There are two types of segment which is geographical and product. Geographical segment is grouped under others because it is regionally and globally operated business. It is classified into many geographical units such as international location, region, countries, neighborhood and cities. Next is product segment. Product segment is categorized under food and beverage. Under this segment, there are several special brands such as Cheesy and Mickey. Next, identify the chief of decision making and its responsibility. Wonderland Group chief of decision making is identified to be the group executive firm. The responsibility is for allocating resources and evaluating the performance of the operating segment and for which the discrete financial information is available. A reportable segment is one that meets any one of the following quantitative threshold. First, revenue. It is reported revenue from sales that to external customers and inter-segment sales is 10% or more of combined revenues of all operating segments. Number two, profit. The absolute amount of segments reported profit or loss is 10% or more of greater of. Combined reported profit of all segment reporting segments 
or combined loss of all segments reporting losses. And the number three is asset. The segment's asset are 10% or more of total asset of all operating segments. We have five reporting segments which consists four reportable segments and one non-reportable segment. The reportable segments are food and beverage, investment, transportation, and marketing activities. This is because the percentage of their revenue more than 10%. And the next one, the non-reportable segment is agricultural activities. This is because uh, the percentage of their revenue is less than 10%. After determining the reportable segment, the company should ensure the total external revenue of reportable segments at least 75% of the total revenue. For this case, the total external revenue is 77.02%. This is because the company include the non-reportable segment and the reportable segment. So, the reporting segment is sufficient since it is more than 75%. This is the new segment report. The total revenue is uh, 785000 and 384 ringgit. The segment profit is 73,784.85 ringgit. There are no segment asset and liabilities since they are not regularly provided to the executive board. Conclusion Advantage of operating segment First, better understanding of the company performance. Second, better access to risk and return of the company. Third, future plan can be well known by the investor. Next, disadvantage of operating segment. There are two disadvantages of operating segment. First, misunderstanding likely to be found among investors about operating information. Second, false report may be affect company reputation. Basis preparation of the interim report. The financial statement of the group and the company have been prepared in accordance with Malaysian Financial Reporting Standard MFRS, International Financial Reporting Standard and the requirements of the Companies Act 2016 in Malaysia. The financial statement have been prepared on a historical cost basis, except otherwise disclosing in the accounting policies. The financial statements are presented in Ringgit Malaysia, the company's financial currency. All values are rounded to the nearest thousand except when otherwise indicated. So, this is the accounting policies used in preparing the interim report. MFRS 116 Property Plan and Equipment Revaluation model have been used to measure. Property plan and equipment measure at cost less accumulated depreciation and impairment losses. It has been depreciated at straight line basis. It been derecognized upon disposal or where there is no future economic benefit. Any gain or loss derecognition of asset include in the statement of comprehensive income when it is derecognized. Next, MFRS 16, leases. Right of use asset. At the contract commencement, the group determine if it is a contract or contain a leases. Right of use asset indicate the underlying asset right to be used. It has been adjusted in any remeasurement of lease liability and measure at cost less any accumulated depreciation and impairment losses. The depreciation is on straight line basis over the shorter lease term and asset estimated useful life. Our company use report quarterly report which are first quarter is 1st January 2022 until 31st March 2022 and second quarter is 1st April 2022 until 30 June 2022. The third quarter is 1st July 2022 until 30 September 2022 and the fourth quarter is 1st October 2022 until 31st December 2022 Period for the current and comparative For the fourth quarter which is from 1st October to 31st December 2022 This is a SOPAL and other composite income for Ernest Labour 
for the car insurance is 3 months, which is 1st October to 31st December 2022. The cumulative year to date uh, is 12 months, which is from 1st January to 31st December 2022. And the cooperative car interim was also 3 months, which is from 1st October to 31st December 2021. And cooperative year to date was 12 months, from 1st January to 31st December 2021. I would like to present about the statement of financial position. For the car interim, it takes 2 3 months, which is 1st October to 31st December 2022. And uh, the cooperative year to date was 12 months, which is from 1st January to 31st December 2021. Next, I would like to uh, present about the statement of changes in equity. It is almost the same as the SLFP. For the cumulative year to date is 3 months, which is 1st October to 31st December 2022. And the cooperative year to date was 12 months, 1st January to 31st December 2021. And lastly, uh, it's about the statement of cash flow. For the cumulative year to date is 12 months, which is 1st January to 31st December 2022. And the cooperative year to date was 12 months, 1st January to 31st December 2021. First investment was made by the company is Share Capital on 1st December 2021. Nasi Bahad issued new ordinary share, 3.25 million unit, amount to 1 ringgit per unit of share, is made to increase their capital. As we can see, in the statement of financial position, before adjustment was made, share capital amount to 267.5 million. However, it will increase after the adjustment amount to 270.75 million. Second adjustment was made by the company is property, land and equipment. On 1st December 2021, one of its vehicles was disposed of with carrying amount 240,000 ringgit for profit 100,000 ringgit. The purchase cost of each vehicle was at 500,000 ringgit. Amount property plan and agreement before adjustment will minus with purchase cost, accumulated depreciation, and we can get the new property plan and agreement amount. From the statement financial of position, before adjustment was made, property plan and agreement was amounted to 1,534,268 ringgit. However, it was decreased after adjustment was made, amounted to 1,533,508 ringgit.